what is shamanism and what do we do? So shamanism, the history of shamanism, is something very, very old. It seems to be as old as mankind itself. Uh, the more, if you study, the whatever you study, if you look around on uh, any kind of, uh, what you call it, um, anthropological books or studies, you, you'll see that in any indigenous tribe across our globe, for all the thousands of years that we know we've been here. So humankind have been here for about 200,000 years. And that whole time, we have had someone outside of the village or one of that, the quirky, odd character that didn't really fit into any of the other characteristics. They weren't really warriors. They weren't really kings. They weren't really workers. They were healers. And sometimes they were healers in odd ways. Sometimes they would be healers that could hear voices, that they would be in touch with what we call the unseen. That they were in touch with energy fields, energy frequencies that most of the normal people weren't able to pick up on. And many people say that shamans, whoever became a shaman in the tribe, were people who were, they were chosen by spirit. So they had shamanic experiences as they grew up. Uh, as in my case, I grew up with having truth dreams when I was a kid. Uh, I would dream something, I'd wake up, and a few months later, I, it would happen. And I'd be like, my God, how is this even possible? And it would lead me to the conclusion that there is more going on to our world than what we can see and touch and hear. That there are more forces at play here that, the, that our lives and our timeline is not linear the way we are taught that it is. Because, you know, modern society has become extremely ego-driven, extremely in-the-box thinking, and anything outside of that box, a lot like old-school churches did, right? Church used to, I mean, it still does it, but it did it way more in the, uh, let's say, the the 1400s, the 1300s, the 1200s, the Inquisition that was going on in Europe, the Catholic Church that was like f pursuing anybody who wasn't thinking the way that the church had, a, had, had said, this is the way it is, right? This is the reality. And anybody who doesn't follow that is heresy. Anything of, that doesn't follow that is heresy. So um, for, for, for how our ego has evolved in our, as a society, as a community, our ego has, has now established full-on frames for what's real and not real. And unfortunately, in some ways, science is a little bit like the old school church. If we haven't proved it scientifically, it cannot be real. And it's a little bit frustrating if you start to look at life from a different perspective, where you realize that, you know what, the world was here way before science came around. We were real way before science came around. And not that science is wrong. But what is wrong is to say that something doesn't exist because we haven't proven it. Because obviously something does exist even if we haven't proved it. Yeah? We can all agree on that, I, I think. So, on the way I look at this and the way the experience is, shamans were people who could tap into unseen forces. They could communicate with spirit, communicate with different kinds of spirits in different dimensions and different fields of energy. And do by doing that, they could heal people who maybe normally couldn't get healed that well. Now, there are, of course, different types of shamans. There are, you know, shamans who can work with weather types and shift weather uh, energies and flows in the, that field. There are shamans who will go into your subconscious and your energy grid in your body and heal that. There are shamans who will, and I mean, you know, and, and there are other shamans or slash medical, or not medical doctors, uh, herbalists, herbal doctors, who will be the people who help heal the person in the tribe who needed help, like a few thousand years ago, who came and, you know, they had a bad stomach, or they had something else, that an infected wound or something. They would come to their herbalist doctor, and the herbalist would put certain type of plants on. And even back then, so herbalists back then were much more in communication with nature than what we are today. And, the, and that was the same for the shaman, right? And in many cultures, the shaman and the herbalist were the same. And in other cultures, they were not. 
It's a, you can't say one thing is always right, the other thing was never right. Um, which, again, as, a, as a, from a modern Western point of view, we want to make everything, this is what it is. We want to put everything into a box. And we want to say, shamans always use a drum to, to, to travel. Or shamans never use a drum to travel which neither one of them is true, right? And, and some people will say, well, shamans are the South America. They will always only use ayahuasca to travel. It's not true either. Um, and, and some other people will say the shamans in the north and in, in, in uh, the Samis, which is the indigenous people in, in Scandinavia, where I'm from, in, in northern part of Sweden, um, they would always travel with their... Because they, they had drums. The Samis used their drums a lot. And they would do a lot of healing work with the drums, but they would also be using mushrooms, the Amanita, Amanita muscara, which is the fly mushroom, the red and the red mushroom with the white dots on it. Um, and and so we can't say that one thing was absolutely always the same thing. So whatever a shaman is, is somebody who works with unseen forces to he help heal both individuals in our tribe or people who come and seek us out, or we help heal the world, as in Earth Mother's energy coming back into our society, into our community, um, into our awareness. Because one of the things that have happened with this, like the 80s investing money everywhere and everything was about money and everything was about profit and every all the corporations were supposed to just get better and better and better, we completely left Earth Mother out. We completely bought the idea that, you know, good finances is the most important thing for survival. Money is everything there is. So then we have a right to suck from Earth Mother so we, so we can survive. But it's not as important that nature survives. And it's an extremely selfish and egotistical point of view of the world. Many shamans are coming back into our world to state and to say, we are part of an ecosystem, but we are just one part of it. And yes, we have a high level of awareness to a certain degree, but we also have a high level of destructiveness in our, in our ways of being. And we are extremely rude and dis, disgraceful to other species on our planet and to Earth Mother herself. So shamans, at least of this kind, we're here to try and remind us we need to listen to Earth Mother. We need to re return to the energies of Earth Mother. We need to take care. We're here as custodians. We're not here to take as much as we can. Now, it's unfortunate. Even in, um, you know, in the Christian Bible, it says that humankind, we are the crown of creation and, and everything here was put for us to, to use. And it's completely a fallacy. It's completely wrong. But we are here. We're here to help help each other help to here to help earth grow and and when we can you know remove our own selfish desires and wants suddenly we're in a flow that we were not in before we have suddenly entered into another state of um, awareness and then we can start helping the world when we're still here when we're living in fear we are usually not able to see how we can contribute to something so shamanism is this, sorry, I took a deep tour here. Shamanism are the healers of the world. They are the storytellers of the world because they also used to tell stories. And when we were still living in caves, they would be telling stories on from the hunt to unite the whole tribe to feel like they were one. And that's a lot of modern day filmmakers and storytellers and writers. They also do a shamanic job in our world to make us all feel normal, like we are, we fit in. Now, the deeper part of shamanism comes in on an individual level, both when we do our own journey and our own healing, because uh, for me at least that was necessary. Before I moved into helping others to heal, I had to heal my own inner wounds. And I, I was, on a long time, I was meditating for a long time. And then as my wounds became more clear to me, I still had a broken heart. I still had inner traumas that were not releasing. I had to look deeper into healing. And in my case, I went into 
uh, first Reiki healing, and that started healing my energy, but not completely enough. And then I moved into, I, Spirit showed me, um, well, actually, she showed me, <laughs> there was a lady that I got to know, Ombute, and I just ran into her in a spiritual gathering. And we started talking, and later it turns out that she is a shaman and that she could teach me the ways of the shaman, that she also took me on a shamanic healing journey. And it's a beautiful inner healing journey that I never thought was possible. And as that happened for me, I was also able pick, to pick up on that energy, to pick up the tools and start to heal others. The way that shamanism has expressed itself in my life has become, I go in and I work in people's energy fields, I remove blockages, I remove traumas, I also realign their spirit, their inner body spirit with their higher, with their higher spirit. And I communicate between the worlds to encourage their spirit guides to get more active in their lives, to kind of really see the positive so that they can come back in alignment with what's going on so their lives can be easier. So this is like several layers of work here that shamans do. We work with all kinds of different healing methods to help people heal and come back to themselves. In another video, I will be explaining more about the trauma and energetic blockages and uh, other things, other tools. So shamans, we have tools, right? We have drums. We have, um, we have sound, we have like singing bowls, right? Singing bowls can work for a shaman as well. This is frequency changing, clearing. Let's see if I can find the right here. And then, of course, we use the feathers. We have the feathers that we use uh, to cut cords, to clear out the energy body, and so forth. We have different kinds of sacraments, sacred medicine. Uh, I use something called, uh, or sacred cacao, ceremonial cacao. Uh, I do that almost every day, and it's a heart opener medicine, and it's also a centering, grounding medicine helping us to return to Earth Mother's energy. There's also other sacraments. There's hape, which is a snuff. You blow up the nose. It's from South America. Very powerful, very grounding, very centering, uh, and, and a, a powerful journey, albeit be it brief, and it's non-psychedelic or anything like that. Uh, then there are, of course, the psychedelic versions of journeying as well, which could include uh, ayahuasca, and it can include uh, magic mushrooms, psilocybin. Um, and there are a multitude of other varieties that are sacred medicines that help us open up for different frequencies and multidimensional realities. All of these is a way for shamans to bring the unseen into the scene and to start working to heal our world. So if this is something for you, I welcome you on this journey. I welcome you I wish you find your power animal. I wish you find your guides. I wish you all the love in the whole world so you can help spread it to others as well. Okay, this was a long video. There's going to be more on shamanism. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it if you like it. And have a beautiful, wonderful day. Namaste and Aho. Hey, 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 hey,